Well, good evening, First Baptist and folks that are coming to the prayer meeting. We're glad that you're here today on the 24th day of February, 2021. It's good to be in the Lord's house. You hear some background. Uh, we have our young people doing Awana tonight. Where that's a blessing. Just love to hear that uh, that sounds of life from uh, from our sanctuary. So thankful for them. We begin our uh, service as we have been, uh, singing uh, "Sweet Hour of Prayer," and by now you probably have memorized it and sing along uh, if you would like. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare. By thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Amen. All right, welcome to our uh, prayer meeting on a Wednesday night. We're glad that you're with us. Uh, let me just uh, check in with my phone to see if anybody puts phone requests uh, or posts any requests on our uh, line while we're waiting. And uh, let's check in there. All right. All right. We're a little behind. Brother Marcos is here. Clifford is here. Good to welcome you, brother. Miss Diane is here. Miss Doris is here. We're glad you guys are here. Perhaps we'll welcome a few others uh, as we go along. A couple things uh, by way of announcement. And uh, let's see. I have a nice piling system here. Uh, yes, the newsletter for this week. Miss Diana does a wonderful job on our newsletter. Uh, every 10 Facebook check-ins will provide a pair of shoes to comfort or to, for someone in need. The hashtag is Give Shoes, and you guys are doing a great job uh, uh, checking in. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. We, beautiful weather today. I, I uh, was really blessed by the weather. I hope you were too. Uh, just kind of an update on the, uh, the voting for the yearly budget, the servants list, and the proposal to help Stonebridge Baptist Church. All three of those items did pass. Uh, unanimous vote, so we're thankful for that. And thank you all for voting. And uh, I know you, like me, if you were here Sunday or listened to the service Sunday, uh, even though we had some technical difficulties uh, I was totally blessed by uh, the Say It Sunday service, and uh, we hope to do that again very soon. And I uh, would like you to think about your testimony, how you'd like to share that. And uh, a good uh, exercise probably be to write that out. And, uh, you know, uh, we'd love to have you share your story with, uh, with the church our next Say It Sunday. Our missionary for uh, this time period is Katie Main. Uh, you remember uh, Timothy from Myanmar gave his testimony, and Katie has uh, been our missionary that's working in Myanmar up until last year, 
and she is praying about uh, perhaps a return there. So uh, pray for the uh, Christian teachers and students in Myanmar. You know, uh, the, a lot of political unrest. Uh, there's been a coup in the government, and uh, so uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a very difficult time, especially for God's people uh, in Myanmar. So you pray for them. We would really appreciate that. And uh, life groups, uh, we have two main life groups going on now. Uh, the Tuesday evening ladies group is 6.30 uh, in the portable, led by Stephanie Kropp. And uh, I know that's just an exciting group. They just started a, a new study, and they would love to have you join them. So uh, let Stephanie know or Wendy know, and they'd be glad to get you connected, get you a book, and get you ready to join that group. Also on Sunday morning, we do have a men's prayer group uh, and uh, Bible study and prayer time and pancake breakfast on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. So love to welcome you uh, to that study. And please pray about, uh, we'd love to have some, some more uh, uh, small groups. We uh, know COVID kind of cut into uh, several other groups, and uh, we're hoping for a return of those groups and also maybe uh, one or two more uh, life groups. So please pray about that. Uh, let's see, Easter baskets for North Frederick Elementary uh, school students, uh, if you'd like to make a donation uh, to the offset the cost of filling 22 Easter baskets for this school, uh, make a donation to the outreach ministry. Terry estimates the cost to be about $12 a basket. So uh, the baskets uh, will, attain, will contain items like personal hygiene items, chapstick, an Easter craft, stuffed plush, uh, animals, uh, bubbles, pencil and paper, snacks, candy, and the Easter message. I tell you, Terry Ponton does a wonderful job with the outreach ministry. So thank you, Miss Terry. All right, that's about all the announcements uh, for tonight. Let me just share with you. Uh, hi, Denise, good to see you on there. Uh, Brother Dave, good to see you there. I think you're out west somewhere, so it's good to see your, your name uh, come across the list. And... Uh, Good to welcome all of you. So our devotion, we've been, we've been looking at the life of Joseph. Now, uh, probably no other character in Scripture uh, exhibits more uh, fidelity to God and his service in the midst of trying circumstances than Joseph. You remember the story of Joseph without going all the way through it. You remember Joseph was... Uh, uh, one of 12 sons of, of Jacob, uh, but he was the favorite son. He was a, the, the first son of his favored wife. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, moving parts there, and uh, there's a lot of opportunity for misunderstanding and uh, uh, jealousy and, and trouble. And there was misunderstanding and jealousy and trouble with that group. And um, you know that... Uh, uh, Joseph uh, was the younger of, of, uh, of those boys, and uh, he was despised uh, by the other boys uh, because he was the favorite, uh, because he was a dreamer. Uh, and uh, that position, you know, got him a, a, a multicolored coat and, uh, and an exalted position. But when he was with the brothers uh, away from uh, his father, it also uh, caused him to be thrown into a cistern and eventually sold into slavery. And that's a very difficult place, especially for a young man, perhaps uh, a young teenager. Uh, you know, it uh, wasn't very old. Uh, and yet, uh, Joseph went down into Egypt, and uh, the scripture talks about him uh, giving his very best. He's, first of all, he was uh, in Potiphar's house, uh, as, uh, a, a ranking official in the, uh, uh, for Pharaoh. And, uh, you know, uh, he became favored in Potiphar among his servants because God was blessing him. And, and instead of sulking and being angry and, and withdrawing, uh, Joseph served to the best of his ability and God blessed him. And he rose up uh, in prominence in Potiphar's house. In fact, uh, you know, Potiphar trusted him so much that the only thing 
Potiphar knew was what was right in front of him. Joseph was in control of everything else. And of course, Potiphar's wife uh, saw that uh, the scripture says David was a, a handsome young man and uh, she set her eyes upon him, set her, uh, set her eyes toward him uh, to get him uh, uh, to, uh, to engage in a physical relationship and we know how that ended. I see you, Miss Dale. Good to, good to welcome you. Um, uh, you know, uh, Joseph said no. And in fact, the, in the very final time, uh, he ran out of the house. Uh, that's a good lesson. Uh, sometimes when we're in a uh, dangerous situation, the best response is run. And uh, so he did. He did that. And uh, she uh, grabbed his outer cloak and uh, accused him before uh, Potiphar and, and uh, Potiphar uh, of course, was, was angry and threw uh, uh, Joseph back into prison, but it was the prison that was connected with the palace. And in that place, again, Joseph uh, did the very best he could and served to the best of his ability, and God blessed him. And you know, there, there's a lesson there for us. Uh, whenever we're in a difficult circumstance, whenever things are not going the way that we think, or maybe they're unfair, and, and, and uh, there's a lot of unfair things in this life. Don't you agree? Uh, there's a lot of things that happen that uh, we would prefer that didn't happen. Yes, and yet we often we have the opportunity, even in difficult circumstances, to do our very best for God. And if we do that, it's going to be a testimony, and that's, that's what happened uh, to Joseph. He, uh, he was in uh, the Pharaoh's prison, uh, but he was, he was doing well, and he, he ran into uh, two of the Pharaoh's uh, uh, servants, the butler uh, and, uh, and the cupbearer, and uh, each of those guys had a dream. We know Joseph was uh, a man of dreams. And, and God used him to interpret these two fellows' dreams. And, of course, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the cupbearer was going to be elevated back to his position. And the baker, well, he was going to, to lose his head. And that's what happened. And uh, uh, Joseph said to the cupbearer, you know, when, you, when you're back in the Pharaoh's uh, presence, uh, would you remember me? And remember me that I've... I've been uh, in prison for, through no fault of my own, and do what you can to, to get me out. Well, uh, the, the fellow said that he would, but he didn't. That ever happened to you? Someone told you that they would do something, but they didn't, and that's disappointing, and that's troubling, and uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for heartache and despair and trouble, and yet even in that moment, uh, uh, Joseph uh, continued to serve uh, to serve well. All right, so now we're up to Genesis 41. So, when two full years had passed, so since the time that the cupbearer was released and went back to his job, two more years went by, and Joseph is still uh, in the prison. And you know, two years can be a very, very, very long time, uh, and yet uh, he was faithful. So, when two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. Isn't that interesting? He had a dream. It, and the dream was this. He was standing by the Nile when out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the river bank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing up on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. You know, I remember uh, uh, seeing this, uh, 
this story, this dream on a flannel graph. Some of you don't know what a flannel graph is, but a flannel graph story uh, for young people and uh, the seven fat cows and the seven thin cows and the, the seven uh, uh, fat grains of, uh, of wheat and the seven thin ones and, and Pharaoh's dream. And, and uh, Pharaoh called all of the magicians and all of the people in the, uh, uh, the soothsayers and all the uh, uh, wise men and none of them could interpret their dream. Really, it happened again uh, in, in Daniel's time. Uh, but in the morning, his mind was troubled, and he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. I, I just I highlighted that verse. Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Uh, you know, uh, often I'm reminded of my shortcomings and, and uh, how I come short uh, of, uh, of God's expectations and God's, uh, God's uh, standards. So uh, he said, the, the cupbearer said, Pharaoh was once angry with his servants and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night and each dream had a meeting of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position and the other man was impaled. Opportunity, just the right time. Did you know that God's timing is always right? Now, from Joseph's point of view, he said, well, it might have taken a long time, but God was preparing Joseph in all of those times, and God was, was working uh, his plan out at just the right time, at just the right place. And, and so when we often think that God is late, God is never late. And, and uh, we often think that, uh, uh, you know, there, God's timing is suspect. God's time is ju always just the right time. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon when he had shaved, and I, I highlighted that, when he had shaved and changed his clothes. Uh, you know, sometimes we just need to, uh, to shave and change our clothes and, and, and uh, put on the right face. And even in the midst of disappointments and even uh, when uh, we feel like the, we've been uh, uh, put upon and, and, and troubled, uh, when, when God's blessing comes, it's, it's a time to... Uh, uh, change, uh, change our raiment, so to speak, or change our clothes and wash our face and, 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 uh, and, and then, then go and, uh, to the place uh, uh, where God has called us to be. So uh, he shaved and, and changed his clothes and came before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you, when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And Joseph said, I cannot do it. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Isn't that a great answer? You know, when we, even when God has gifted us for a specific task, all the glory goes to him. Uh, you know, uh, God has gifted you in very special ways. Each one of us has a gift. But, uh, you know, uh, when we use those gifts in God's service, it's for his glory. So, uh, Whatever God has gifted you with, you should use it. And uh, you should use it for his glory. And if someone should say to us, you know, uh, man, you, you did a really good job. Well, we, always, we all like to be complimented. I love it when someone says, you know, I really appreciated your message. But really, all the glory goes to God. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, in my dream, I was standing on the bank of the Nile. And out of the river, there came up seven cows, fat and sleek. And they grazed among the reeds, and after them seven other cows came up, scrawny and very ugly and lean. I have never seen such ugly cows in the land of Egypt. The lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first. But even after they ate them, no one could tell that they had done so, for they looked just as ugly as before. Then I woke up. In my dream, I saw seven heads of grain, 
full and good, growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads sprouted, withered and thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads. I told this to the magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven years. So are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as, as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance of Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and all of his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made this known to you and there is no one so discerning as wise as you, you will be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. So. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in the robes of fine linen, put a gold chain around his neck, and made him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And the people shouted before him, make way, make way. You know, this was Joseph, the, the fellow who was sold into slavery. This is Joseph, uh, the fellow whose brothers betrayed him. This is Joseph who was uh, in Potiphar's house and, and, and he was lied on and he was, uh, he was uh, uh, demeaned and put back into prison. Uh, this is Joseph who is now becoming the second in command. And uh, verse 46 says, and Joseph was 30 years old. Now, however old Joseph was, let's say he was 18. That's a good guess uh, when he was thrown into the cistern. 12 years have gone by, if he was 18 years old, and when he entered the service of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And, and Joseph went out from uh, Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance, stored it in the cities. Each city he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. He stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Ashnath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. And Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my trouble in all my father's household. And the second son he named Ephraim and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Listen, our God is able to cause us to forget those who harm us, cause us to forget those who do us wrong. The very, the very base meaning of the word forgive is really to forget. So God has made me really to forgive those who have harmed me because he has another plan. And I want you to know that God has a plan for your life, that God cares about your suffering, 
but it very well may be that he's going to use this time of suffering and use this time of trouble to prepare you for blessings down the road. And God, he said, has made me fruitful in the land of his suffering. And God can make you fruitful in the land of your suffering. So the time of famine came. And, and really, God was preparing Joseph to preserve his people because there was a famine in Egypt. There was also a famine in Canaan. And, uh, and, that, and that famine in Canaan would drive Joseph's family to Egypt. And uh, guess who is going to be there and second in command, uh, willing, ready to, to bring them into that protection. I see you, Miss Robin. Glad you made it to, uh, to South Carolina. Thanks for letting us know. We appreciate that. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the second story of, of Egypt. All the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere and also uh, uh, severe in Canaan where Joseph's family was. And so God is preparing a way to preserve his people and particularly the line of Messiah. All right, so that's the devotion for tonight. May God bless it and uh, may we uh, look at times of our own suffering, our own troubles, and remember that God has said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And uh, he's, uh, he's going to use a, a difficult circumstance in order to grow us and prepare us uh, for perhaps service in some way or blessing in some way. God wants to use you in all the circumstances of your life. All right, so I have uh, quite a, uh, a lengthy prayer list tonight, and I'm going to take a little sip of coffee here. It's a little bit late for me to be drinking coffee. I hope I can uh, actually go to sleep tonight, but I trust that we'll be able to. All right. Here's some prayer requests that we've uh, received. You remember we've been praying for Oral Herndon, who had a great fall at work off of a ladder. Uh, I'm going to ask him how tall that ladder was, that he, how far he fell one of these days. But uh, according to Dale, he continues to do well. Uh, he's in rehab now, but he hopes to be home uh, by March the 3rd, which I think is next week. And... Uh, so uh, you pray for Oral and uh, his rehab and uh, uh, for, for uh, Sister Dale. And I know she's looking forward to getting him back home. Also, Oral's sister, Linda, who's having some severe health issues. She was in the hospital last week. Uh, she is at home now, according to, uh, to Dale. And uh, she is on hospice care. So remember... Oral's sister, Linda. Hi, Miss Betty. Good to see you. I'm glad you're, you're on there with us. Thank you for being here. Um, Angela Viseri, I talked to Paul, our, our texted with Paul today. Uh, she was able to have the follow-up with her surgeon today, and uh, she's, she's doing well. I think she has to go back in three months, so uh, that's a blessing. Uh, I was able to connect with a, a local family in our community, the family of Janet Johnson. Uh, Janet uh, has uh, pancreatic cancer. She's on hospice care. And I visited with the family today. So I ask you to pray with, uh, with me for Janet and her family uh, as she nears her home going time. Uh, Robin Murphy was the next person on my list uh, traveling to South Carolina. And I'm glad to report by the scroll here that she made it uh, to South Carolina. We're, we're blessed by that. Thank you. Uh, Miss Robin. Also, we did receive a request this week from Jenny Freeburn, who asked that we pray for Ron Fry, uh, her daughter-in-law's father. Uh, he has to have surgery for multiple spinal fractures. So if you will, pray for Ron Fry. Also, continue to remember Jenny as she ministers to her mother, uh, who has uh, really a, a severe case of dementia uh, as she's growing older. So pray for that. I think I saw Denise Bittinger on here. Denise, uh, uh, I thought we should continue to pray for Sabrina during her pregnancy and also for Denise's co-worker, uh, Tara, and who is having uh, health issues. And uh, remember, Debbie's co-worker's husband, his name is David, uh, who's been fighting COVID, and uh, continue to remember that, uh, that family, and especially David. 
Uh, I saw Miss Wendy. I haven't heard anything about Ian, but the last thing we've heard from him that he was doing better. So uh, continue to remember uh, Ian as you pray. Uh, I want to let you know that Star and Joy and their family uh, will be uh, uh, traveling with their mom for a time later away later this week. I think they're going down to Kentucky to the Ark. And uh, so that's a blessing. And uh, pray for their traveling mercies and just have a wonderful time together. Also, hey, Brother Jerome, good to see you. Uh, glad you're here. See you, Miss Doris. Uh, Debbie Vaught, our friend Debbie Vaught, fell recently and broke her wrist, and she's going to have surgery uh, to uh, uh, repair that broken wrist on March the 1st. So remember uh, Debbie as you pray. And also for Jeff's family uh, at the passing of his mother recently, Dolores, who was a, a great member here and a wonderful uh, blessing. All right. Um, Need to pray for Debbie Redman. I, I think Debbie was have to have back surgery this past Monday. And uh, I saw Diana, I think, on the list. I don't know how uh, Debbie did. I hope that she did well. Uh, continue to remember her as she, uh, as she recovers. And let's see, another uh, series of requests from Miss Diana, uh, who says, uh, pray for each other, amen. Uh, very stressful time, and we all need to remember each other. And uh, then she says, especially our pastors uh, who are leading us through this difficult time. And I want to say thank you very much uh, for those prayers. Uh, pray for uh, a, a young lady named Kelly. It's an email from Star. Uh, she said, uh, uh, she writes to, uh, to Diana, I just got a message that a young woman named Kelly has cancer and has gone through 45 rounds of chemo and is not doing well. I just can't imagine. Uh, asking for prayers for Kelly and her family. Um, Kelly has, a, I mean, the family has had a lot of heartbreak, and Kelly is such a sweet person. So uh, please pray for Kelly and her family. Also, uh, pray for those who are grieving. There are many, of course, uh, who are grieving the loss of loved ones uh, during this time. Also, pray for Jean Burdett. Uh, Jean, uh, who is a pastor in Florida, has COVID. And uh, he's just been coughing a lot. Uh, the doctors told him he, has, he may have some permanent lung, lung damage. And he uh, is on two different medications and some other meds. So pray for healing for Brother Gene and their family. Uh, of course, uh, pray for uh, people in Texas. Uh, we know that they have undergone some really strange weather conditions. Uh, you know, many people are suffering. Uh, Diana says she has a friend who said their power is back, but the water is having to be boiled and food may become an issue. So, uh, so pray for uh, the folks there in Texas. Pray for those that are homeless, especially during uh, these times of uh, frigid conditions in many parts of our country. Pray for Kimberly Walker. She had an Achilles tendon injury, uh, surgery last year, and it's a great deal of pain. The doctor's talking about doing another surgery. So uh, remember uh, Kimberly Walker. Uh, she's probably going to have to do more therapy because of our insurance requirements. So Kimberly is a pastor's wife, administrative assistant for the church, children's director. Uh, amen. So pray for healing, strength, and comfort. Uh, pray for our country and her leaders. Uh, Diana writes, um, we may not always agree with each other on everything being done in our country, but we can also, we can agree to pray. We need Jesus. Can I get a witness? We definitely need Jesus. Pray for the, for the world to be rid of COVID. Uh, a lot going on with COVID. Uh, let's remember uh, this. Uh, update on prayer, Katie Trenda Gunser, uh, staying at her sister Jamie's home, recuperating from her emergency hysterectomy. Uh, in a few weeks, the doctors will prevent, present their treatment plan for the cancer uh, they found and removed. So pray for complete healing, wisdom, peace, and comfort. All right, a couple of praises. Uh, I got a, a message from uh, 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 Cliff Stewart uh, today who uh, was praising the Lord that he got his first COVID vaccination shot. And uh, I'll, I'll join you in that, Brother Cliff. Uh, Debbie and I both got our first vaccine shot today as well. 
And uh, so we're, we're blessed and praising God for that. And um, also praising God for uh, uh, Awana's going on. You hear the game sessions uh, going on here. So very thankful for our Awana group and uh, our young people and leaders. So that's kind of all the prayer requests that I had tonight. Uh, were there any other prayer requests that you guys had? I'm going to scroll back and see if there was. All right. Ms. Doris says, keep several people in prayer, please. God knows all the details for Cassie and Nan. So uh, remember Cassie. Isn't that wonderful about our God? He knows all the details. I love that. Remember Brother Dave. We're, he's away from us. We're, it's always good to see you pop up there, Dave, and pray that God will give you safe travels and a wonderful time. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and as we uh, uh, close out our time together and uh, ask God to bless all the ones that were remain, uh, questioned or brought up to the Lord in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessing of being together tonight. And although uh, I'm in this room uh, by myself, uh, I know that uh, there's life in the building. I can hear uh, the voices of our Awana children and leaders and very thankful for them and blessed by them. And Father, I just pray for all the ones that were mentioned for prayer tonight. Thank you for the lesson that we've heard uh, uh, in uh uh, for Joseph, what a great story that is. What a great role model uh, he is for us. He just kept going, kept being the best he could be in the spite of difficult circumstances. All the while, Lord, you're preparing him to bless his family and to bless the world, really. And uh, so, Lord, uh, you may be preparing us for something. You may be leading us through a dark place uh, for a purpose of, of blessing us and using us uh, in many ways. So, Lord, I just pray that You'll give, keep our eyes upon you and that we'll continue uh, serving you well, even in difficult times. Father, bless Brother Earl. Oral, uh, uh, Lord, continue to heal him. I uh, pray that you'll just to give him strength and knit those bones together, Lord, and bring him home when it's time for him to come home. And bless Dale uh, as he's away from her and as she continues to work. And we just pray, Lord, for your grace on the Herndon family. For Oral's sister, Linda, Lord, uh, for your grace to be poured out upon her. She's on hospice care, Lord, and she's in your hands. And I thank you, Lord, for hospice workers. What, a, what an angelic bunch those, those folks are and how, how they bring grace and, and comfort and peace to families who are often at the end of their rope emotionally and physically. Pray for Angela, Lord, and thankful for, for good news on her part. Uh, continue to heal her body, Lord, and just bring her back to her, to her health, and we can't wait to see her again. Bless Paul as he cares for her. Thank you for Janet, Lord. I met her today, although she was, really, she was asleep, but I met her family, Lord, and we know that uh, she is under hospice care as well, and Father, bless that dear family and encourage them. Uh, we, this is a difficult journey, we know, but Father, I pray that you'd come along beside them and grant them the the things that they need at this time. And Father, when it's Janet's time to, uh, to go to her heavenly home, we know that she's a believer. Lord, I just pray that, that you would uh, receive her as you do uh, your saints and uh, into a glorious place called heaven. Lord, thank you for giving Robin Murphy traveling mercy to South Carolina to be with her family, especially her mom, and just, uh, just give her uh, a great visit and uh, that she would just uh, rejoice in being together with them uh, and safe travels. Uh, bless Jenny Freeburn as she ministers to her mom, and also we pray for Ron Fry, her daughter-in-law's dad, who's going to have surgery. Bless the, uh, the surgeons as they care for him, and Lord, I just pray for the po best possible outcome. Uh, we pray for Denise's uh, daughter, Sabrina, during her pregnancy, Lord, that you would keep her safe, and bless the wife of the child, and, and we pray that all would be well. We do pray for Tara as well. Lord, just bring her through those health issues and provide for her every need. I pray for the same for David, who's fighting COVID, uh, for Jean Burdett and family. Lord, uh, I just pray for them, your, your watch care over him. 
uh, and their family, for Ian, Lord, continued blessings there, for Star and Joy and their family as they travel with their mother and their mother's sister for a time away later this week. I pray, Lord, you give them traveling mercy and just a joyful time of fellowship. Father, we know that uh, they're missing their dad, but we know that this time of fellowship is really good for them, so bless them. Bless Sister Debbie Vaught as she's going to have surgery to repair her broken wrist, and we pray that you'd bless that surgeon and that all would be well and would, those bones would knit together well. And we do pray for those that are grieving the loss of loved ones like the Vaught family at the passing of our friend Dolores. Uh, Father, we pray for Debbie Redman, uh, one of ours who, who had surgery this week, uh, Cliff's mom, and we pray that the surgery went well and, and uh, it was her fourth back surgery in the past 12 months. I'm sure she's, uh, uh, she's, she's undergoing a lot of uh, struggles there. So pray for wisdom for the surgeon and we pray for her healing and peace and comfort for her and for her family. Uh, we do pray for Kelly, uh, this, this uh, name that we got from Star. She's undergone 45 rounds of chemo and Father, I just pray for, uh, for Kelly, for, for her healing, for grace to be poured out upon her and her family who has gone through so many ups and downs, Lord, uh, that you would just provide healing, mercy, peace, and comfort for Kelly and her family. Uh, we do pray for the people in Texas, especially your people, Lord, who are suffering because of this extreme weather that they've had and the, with the power and, and just the water pipes that are breaking. So let's have one thing right on top of the other. So Lord, I just pray that you'd bring them through it and that you would provide healing and, and restoration and grace. We pray for those that are homeless, especially during this time of frigid tempers, temperatures and winter weather. Father, we just pray uh, uh, that you would provide uh, people with, uh, with gracious hearts to uh, uh, provide warmth and care and food. Pray for Kimberly Walker, who has an Achilles tendon that's uh, uh, causing so many uh, troubles in her life. And we just pray for healing and strength and comfort for him, for her. We pray for our country and her leaders. And uh, Father, we pray that they would turn their hearts toward you. And, and Lord, that they would seek their wisdom from you. Father, I pray for the vaccine that's coming out and for, uh, for uh, the world. And, and I think especially for our country to be turn this corner on COVID. I, I think of uh, being close to my family and, and, and seeing a reunion and looking forward to that day. We pray for Katie Gunser and uh, continued blessings on her as she recovers from her surgery and receives her treatment plan. plan. And uh, I just pray that uh, all would be well there. Uh, we praise you, Lord, for uh, all the, that you're doing. I, I wanna also mention Cassie and Nan uh, the requests that we, we know that you know the circumstances and just lay your, your blessings upon them, Lord, and provide for their every need. Thank you, Lord, for the COVID shot that Debbie and I got today and that Brother Cliff did and perhaps others. And for those that are waiting, we just pray that uh, it would be soon and uh, that we could turn the corner uh, on this COVID issue. Uh, Lord, I thank you for our WANA students that are in session tonight. We hear their voices and we're so thankful for them. And so, Lord, as we close uh, our time of prayer, let me thank you for all those that have joined in with us tonight. We lift our hearts uh, in praise to you. We lift our hearts uh, uh, together for all of these requests. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless each one. Guide and direct our steps. And, Father, in the midst of difficult circumstances, help us to give you praise. For you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining with us tonight. It was uh, kind of long, I guess. I hope uh, you were able to persevere through that. And uh, we're going to close uh, with a song. And let's see which song we're going to choose. All right, we're going to sing At the Cross. 
Uh, in the former Red Book that we used to have, it was 94, and Debbie could, sit, could play this song on the piano. So uh, when we were very young in ministry, and she actually played the piano for us at times, at times, uh, we would often play at the cross because she was comfortable with, with uh, playing that. All right, at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away, tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. All right. I saw you, Brother Randy. Good to see you scrolling through there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I pray that God will bless you with a great rest of your week and uh, hope the weather uh, continues to be good and uh, that you enjoy God's blessings on your life. Thanks for joining us. God bless you.